Hey, we are talking about Google Classroom and we are going back to classroom using the hashtag, hashtag back to classroom if you'd like to share any Google Classroom tips. Now our topic today is one topic for one student in Google Classroom. Now there's some great reasons to wanna to differentiate for one particular student. And one of the great things about Google Classroom is it's gonna let you do that. Now, if you wanna join backtoclassroom.org, backtoclassroom.org is our Facebook group. And we are talking about Google Classroom, tips for Google Classroom and tools that work really well with Google Classroom, like Schoolytics, Adobe for Education, and Moat, and many others. If you have tips for Google Classroom, please join backtoclassroom.org and share your tips and ideas, or if you just have questions about the presentation today, we can continue the conversation at backtoclassroom.org. I am Alice Keeler. I am a high school math teacher, and I also code part-time for Schoolytics. I've written several books, including Teaching with Google Jamboard is my most recent book, and Stepping Up to Google Classroom, 50 Steps for Beginners. So if you are new to Google Classroom, I think mine and Kim Matina's book, Stepping Up to Google Classroom, will be really helpful for you. And you can find those at alicekeeler.com slash books. Okay, so let's take a look. We are looking at one topic for one student in Google Classroom. One topic for one student in Google Classroom, and this is actually really easy to do. You're just gonna start by creating a topic in Google Classroom. Now, when you just create a topic, that topic is invisible. No one can see the topic. No assignments, no topic is visible to students. That is only for you. Now, if you add a bunch of assignments to that topic and they are in draft, well, all of those draft assignments are obviously in draft and cannot be seen by the students, but the same is true for the topic. If there are no published assignments in a topic, the whole topic is invisible. Hey, thanks for joining me, appreciate it. And if anyone has any questions, please feel free to post a comment here. I will be checking the comments. And if you're not watching the live stream, head on over to backtoclassroom.org and we can continue the conversation. So when you are in Google Classroom and you create a topic, that topic is not visible to students unless there is an assignment that is published in that topic. Okay, now, if you put in an assignment and by default, that assignment is assigned to all students. You can select all students and deselect all students and choose just one student to assign the assignment to. Now, when you publish that one assignment, there is one assignment with one student in this one topic and that one student can see the topic and nobody else can. The topic is invisible to everyone else. So let's say I make another assignment and I do all students and I put it in that topic. Well, now all students can see that topic. Whatever the most number of students there is, is who can see that particular topic. So if I have an assignment that's assigned to one student in a topic and that's the only assignment, then only that one student can see it. If I create a second assignment and I assign it to the same student, then only that student can see that topic even exists. If I assign an assignment to a different student, so student C, not student A, if I assign it to a different student that, and I put it in that topic, the student will be able to see the topic and the assignment that they were assigned to, but they would not be able to see the previous assignments that were not assigned to them that were only assigned to student A. Does that make sense? If you have been assigned to any assignment in a topic, then you can see the whole topic, but you can still only see assignments that you've been assigned to. So that's one of the great ways to differentiate with Google Classroom, is you can create an assignment and create it for only a subgroup of students, and the only people who know that that assignment exists are the ones who that assignment was assigned to. So when I have a student who has an IEP and they have very specific things that I need to change for their assignment, what I will do is I will create an assignment. I will deselect that one student, and then I will copy that assignment, and I only select that one student. Now, since I copied it, the two assignments 
look identical. They have the same assignment title, they have the same assignment number, except in the second one, I make the necessary accommodations. Maybe I need to reduce the number of questions or provide some notes or something that helps me to be compliant or just know what my students need. And then I try to differentiate around those. And so it looks pretty much the same to everybody. One student leans over like, oh, you have an assignment number 12 also. But what they don't know is that that assignment number 12 has some modifications or challenges. But I can do that with an entire topic. I have frequently had a student who had previously taken the math class that I'm teaching and probably didn't do their homework. And so they were looking for some extra challenges. They're like, I'm really into this. And so trying to get some assignments and topics that really interest and engage this one student who obviously was previously disengaged in the math class before. So I will create a topic just for that one student and I'll create some alternative assignments in that one topic for that one student and nobody else in the class knows that I have done this. The topic doesn't even exist. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a demonstration of what that would look like. So I'm over here in Google Classroom. Hey, thanks, Amanda. Thanks for joining, appreciate it. I'm in this Google Classroom and I'm gonna choose Create. So under Create, I'm gonna choose Topic. I'm gonna create a topic and this is for you, Amanda. I'm gonna call it Amanda. So now I have this topic, Amanda. Nobody sees that this topic exists, nobody. It is invisible to 100% of my students. So then I'm gonna come up and create an assignment. Now here's where this example falls apart as I named the topic Amanda, but I don't think I have any fake students named Amanda in this fake class. So I'm gonna create an assignment. Just for you, Amanda, and under all students over here on the side, you can see it says all students, I'm going to deselect. Sure enough, I don't have an Amanda, so I'll sign it to myself. Uh, I sign it to one student. As you can see, it says right here, one student instead of all students. By default, it would say all students. And then under topic, I'm gonna choose the topic that I made just for this student that I am differentiating for. So I have this one topic, it's assigned to this one student, and I'm gonna click assign. So let's go ahead and take a look. So you can see in here, I have this topic. It looks like a regular assignment, but you'll notice that it says it's only assigned to one person as opposed to everyone in the class. So this one student can see the topic and that's it. Let's go take a look at the stream. You can see that I have the assignment. Whoops, I need to update the stream. You can see I have this one assignment to this one student. And actually even this announcement is posted only to that student. So I've announced the assignment, but it's only posted for the one student in the one assignment in the topic, and no one else even knows that there is an Amanda topic at all. Okay, so I hope that was really helpful. Just something quick to help you to use Google Classroom in ways that are different that you can't really do very easily with paper. Think about how you can differentiate by creating a whole topic for one student where the assignments in that topic are just for the one student. Now, let me give you one more tip. You'll notice that I have named this one Amanda, which is fine because I'm trying to let Amanda know these are assignments that I'm differentiating for you. Except what are the odds that when I create an assignment, I make a mistake and I make it assigned to all students and not just Amanda? Well, I know the answer to this because I've done this many times and I always make a mistake. And then everyone knows that I have an Amanda topic because I accidentally assigned an assignment to that topic. So I recommend you don't name the topic by their name. Maybe just call it differentiated activities or challenges or something so that if you accidentally make a mistake, you don't reveal the assignment topic to everybody in the class. Okay, so we are at backtoclassroom.org. If you have more questions or just want to know more about using Google Classroom, please join us in the Facebook group, backtoclassroom.org. All right, have a great afternoon and thank you for joining me at hashtag backtoclassroom.